Welcome to Live Reality Game Podcast.、Uh, we are here to make reality adventure. If this is the first time to tune in to Live Reality Podcast and seeing me here, my name is Bill. I'm the executive executive producer of the Amazing Hunt, Vancouver's own version of Amazing Race. We create races for adventurous individuals and Amazing Race super fans to experience authentic experience like the reality TV show. In most recent episode in the Amazing Race, we saw the race was affected by the pandemic and had to halt their production. And after 19 months later, the team came back and resumed the race in Switzerland. And what make the Amazing Hunt be able to do the race in pandemic? And on my right, and you see one of the person that helped me with the Amazing Hunt and possible during the pandemic is our celebrity host, sketch com- comedian, and Amazing Race Canada season two alumni Ryan Steele. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. I'm a little tired. I didn't get enough sleep, but、uh, you know, I got my coffee and I had a shower, so that's good. Yes, this is looks like coffee, but may not be coffee. So okay.、Oh. So then, what have you been up to, Ryan? What I've been up to? Well,、um, so yeah, I'm, I'm my comedy partner Amy Good, Good Murphy, and I do the Ryan and Amy show, and I've been. Pretty much spending、uh, a lot of time with her. We we just、uh, started a podcast and we have five episodes recorded and edited and ready to go. We're just waiting for our producers at Comedy Here Often to get it all sorted. I guess it's a little bit of a process going through Acast and、uh, Apple Music and Spotify. Blah blah blah. blah. It's funny though because we recorded these episodes in November and December, and they're going to be premiering in either late January or February. So some of the stuff we talked about will be a little dated. But anyway, we have a podcast coming, and I actually really, really enjoyed、um, recording the episode. So I'm excited to do more. We've had some great guests like Brooklyn Heights and Mina Savari. And then、um, other than that, we're just working a lot on our content. We've started doing.、Um, We have relationships with brands now on Instagram, so that's been fun to do like little mini commercials and put our Ryan and Amy spin on it. And also with that comes some money, which has been nice.、Um, yeah, so it's just been a lot of Ryan and Amy show, and、um, but my par- my parents got a puppy, so there's been a little bit of puppy time too. Yeah, so Ryan, pretty much, well, I'm following、uh, his Instagram on Ryan and Amy show as well as Ryan Steele. As well, he has two Instagram account, but the one that's actually with a full content with his sketch comedy will be on the bottom right there. You see it, Ryan and Amy show right there. So today, I'm happy and honored to bring Ryan back. And Ryan was the host of Amazing Hunt in 2019 and 2020. And since the Amazing Race just did an episode and it came back after 19 months during、uh, after the pandemic, we are here actually to talk about some behind the scene actions in the Amazing Hunt. Which is a Vancouver once again Vancouver's own reality TV style venture, like just like the Amazing Race. So for you listener out there who is eager to produce your own races in your beautiful city, we hope this will help you a little bit. And we're ha- happy to finally talk about what we did during the pandemic and what we have done. So feel free to join our podcast and ask any questions. It will answer them. You can also ask ask Ryan any questions as well. So today our conversation will be focused on our thirty third race,、uh, which is our first race ever produced ever since the pandemic started in March twenty twenty. So correct me if I'm wrong,、uh, wrong Ryan.、Um, I believe RuPaul's Drag Race was the first reality TV show that resumed production in July twenty twenty.、Uh, I think that's the first reality TV show ever came back in the TV television network. Is that right? Sounds. I think that sounds correct. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. So. Oh no, then, no, no. Oh no. Sorry. Or 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 was it yours? <laughs> I no, I, I, I was planning mine in、uh, in June, but the pandemic wasn't. Most people still don't know about what, the the log,、uh, logistic of it or what the details about the pandemic. So we kind of keep pushing ours back, one month、mm. and two months, right? So then, talking about RuPaul's Drag Race, I know Ryan's podcast recently have posted a trailer, which is called "What's Your Name of Podcast Again." Uh, poor little thing. <laughs> poor、Sorry. little thing. Yes, it talk about Ryan has a special encounter with one of the drag queens on the show Brooklyn Heights. It's、mm-hmm. really cool. I, I can't I can't wink, so I say wink wink. So it's it's very funny. So you better listen to it when it comes out.、Mm-hmm. Uh, when do you think it's gonna come out, Ryan? For your、uh... oh god, yeah, it should. 
it, it should it should be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Right now, like okay. we've done everything on our end. We have five uh, episodes recorded and and final mixed and edited. Yeah. Like we've done everything on our end. So it's just now waiting on our producers to get everything set up with all the platforms where it will be uh, streamed on, and then we're good to go. And once we once we go on, then it's like okay, you got to bang out no once problem. a week. So anyway, we have I mean, lots of fun guests that we want to ask. Just to let you know, it's very funny. So go to Ryan and Amy Show Instagram to actually check out the trailer. Okay. It's Thank very you. personal, very, very personal. <laughs> it is, yeah. So after the RuPaul's Drag Race uh, started production in July 2020, then Big Brother All-Stars from CBS, a recent production mm. in August 2020. Then I think the Amazing Hunt was like, is the first ever race uh, competition that actually came back to production on August 29th, 2020. So we are actually about one year ahead of the amazing race, but look, we're doing it locally. So I assume it's much, much easier than the traveling uh, globe globally, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about the pandemic and then we talk about um, everybody's life being affected. So how has it affected your uh, sketch comedy plans that you, uh, you had in 2020? I know you tried to put on some shows uh, for the, your fans, and how did that work out for you or how did that affect you when you you know yeah i mean for the direction that amy and i were going it didn't affect us too much because we used to do a monthly live show back in the day and we would be guests on other shows and as the years have gone by we've been focusing so much more on uh the content online content part of it and, and creating a television pilot and all that so we only like we usually do just for last northwest every year so last year we didn't do that um, but it did kind of force us to move more and even more into uh, online content. So uh, we did stay away for a while. We even got to a point where Amy would come over and she would wear a mask and we would green screen each other. We'd film each other separate and then we would edit each other, us next to each other, because that's how seriously Amy was, I say we were taking the pandemic at the beginning, but over time and over um, vaccinations and stuff, we are now totally you know, fine and we, and we, we we see each other every day. So yeah, I mean, it just actually in, in a good way, it forced us to make more, more online, online content. Yes. And I have watched a lot of the clips from Ryan's uh, uh, sketch comedy. Ryan's also a very good editor too. You will, you will see that all the green screen thing that he did, you know, it makes it look like they're those two are actually in the same room. I was, the only thing is I how, uh, I was kind of feel bad about myself. My editing is that I never use green screen, but that will be a lot of work for sure. Yeah, it's just green screen. I've been just re I've been doing it for years, and just the other day we did one where I finally really I think figured out the lighting because the lighting is very integral to green screen. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought some side lights now, so now I have a main light and I have ones coming from the side. And we cranked the main one, and when I put it into my final cut, it was a breeze to edit. So if you're gonna do yeah. green screen, light it up. That's good. So we talk about the pandemic that you, you know, there's some a little bit of trouble that you had with uh, producing the Ryan and Amy show and with Amy because you have to basically wear a mask and kind of do that like a separate cut uh, film. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think at that moment because you be, you've been on this project with me on the Amazing Hunt since 2019 and that's our comeback thing which with um, finished business backing. June 2019. Do you ever think the Amazing Hunt's going to come back in 2020 just because of the pandemic? I, I did not. Um, but yeah, I remember chatting with you, and you were and you were quite confident um, that we could uh, make this happen. And it's also funny how the pandemic back in the day was like it was so. Oh, 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 but the numbers were nothing compared to what they are now, and it's now that we're kind of living a more normal life. So um, yeah, but to answer your question, no, I did not think it would be coming back in 2020. Well, yes. So then, so as we gradually learned about the COVID back in 2020, how it spread and it was considered to be a safer environment, the Amazing Hunt basically had to scrap the original idea. So right, a lot of things that actually Ryan didn't know about what goes on behind the spring and behind the scene. Ryan mm -hmm. just had to show up and be charming and be himself. And uh, so the race originally was planned to use SkyTrain. Um, and at that moment, that if there will be if you're using public transit, that's a lot of interaction with strangers. So we mm -hmm. kind of scrapped the idea. So after careful consideration, we have to find a very big open space. So University of British Columbia, the third largest university in Canada, uh, at that moment was the best location for eight teams to commence the adventure. 
because it is a wide open 400 hectares outdoor space, as in one of your speech, uh, the speech that you were reading right at the beginning of it. It was like 400 hectares for the teams to run across. Well, not really 400 hectares, the entire 400, but we know that all the teams were really, really tired during the entire race. I think it was about six hour long from uh, 8, uh, 8.30 in the beginning, I think 3.30, probably about five hours almost running so much of it. So before we get into the little, little gritty about uh, how what, behind the scene of the Amazing Hunt, what was your experience working with the Amazing Hunt on that particular day? At UBC? Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was, I mean, I've, I, I've been to UBC before, but not uh, walked around the lands and mm -hmm. seen all the great things there. So for me, that was uh, a great part of it. And it was all outside, so it was super safe and the teams were great. Um, yeah, so overall, I remember that day was a great experience. That's good. So, uh, but I did, I did actually ask Ryan to do more than just hosting gig. I put a lot of responsibility on him as well. <laughs> which you find, you find a little bit stressful, which I feel stressful too. And, mm -hmm. But let us see, let's break down the steps how the Amazing Hunt's created. Like for people who like to create races, this is actually a good thing that even the Amazing Race never actually go behind the scene. And we try to make it first. The Amazing Hunt will be the first one to talk about a little bit. So usually as an executive, executive producer, what I do is first, I need to scout the area. So when it goes to UBC, it's like, UBC is huge. If, if you talk to any Vancouver locals, you'll be like, they they all know how big the UBC is. So as an even though we're a non-TV network production team, but we still film the race as much as we can. So we try to produce in a real TV style. So it is important for me actually to get to know the area and be able to showcase the best of everything in the location at which I choose to raise in or what is the best for the teams to choose to 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 feature in that particular race. So mm. first of all, like we talked about, it's outdoor, it has to be wide open. And we have, we have races in UBC before in the past, and we never fully integrate the entire race into UBC before. So I think that was the best choice back then in August, 2020. So for the for you planners out there, you just have to choose a location that's actually very, very out, like outstanding. I mean, we, we know there's a lot of people doing neighborhood race or there's races that was done in uh, out, uh, Calgary. I think the Calgary race was all the location they pick is very good. Maybe hopefully one day I can do a race there, but it's all really, it's because we film it, it is always important to pick locations that also not only uh, is responsive to locals, but for people who are outside of Canada or even Vancouver, when they look at the footage, they'll be like, oh, we see a biggest university in UBC and what they have to offer. So something like that. So second, we go to planning, figure out, figure out the locations. We can set up room markers, feature challenges, and use, use it as a pit stops and finish line. So talking about pit stops, we try to be very creative, demand high quality work from Ryan, of course. <laughs> we, I know he can do it. And I um, like we, like to, we introduced the pit stop of University of British Columbia, aka we call it UBC for short. So we had Ryan to do a like Phil Kogan signature move when they're doing a speech in a circular motion. So we're gonna show a clip right here and we will see what Ryan says about his experience on the side of it. This is the Asian Center for the Faculty of Asian Studies. The architecture of the Asian Center is based on a traditional pagoda. The building was intended to be a centennial gift funded by the government of Japan, serving as a symbol of Asian-Canadian and Canadian-Japan relations. Does it make you feel like you're in Tokyo, Japan? This pagoda is the first pit stop of the race. The last team to check in here will receive a penalty. Yes, yes. Exactly. Ryan, did a very, Ryan did a very good job, and so, but it did take a three to four tries to it's some. It, it stumbled by me because I, I'm the camera holder in the background, so I tripped myself once, and then we tried to take several takes. And Ryan, every time he's able to, do, he was able to deliver the speech perfectly. We we'll just try to pick the best out of it, right? So, 
what do you think when I actually ask you to do this several times? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was just, I would get no, I'm frustrated, not at you, more at myself. They, these were wordy a uh, little uh, paragraphs to say, and I did not have them fully memorized. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a little bit of a challenge to me. You know, like I, uh, it was harder than I thought. Okay. But you did a wonderful job. And then I think, a lot of people, when they saw it on, on, my, on Instagram, the winner from season 32 from The Amazing Race, uh, James, uh, he, he actually liked the video as well as Will as well, uh, the couple that won The Amazing Race 32. They, they really liked your work and actually liked the video. Oh, so, nice. yeah, it's it's actually, we I always try to pull up something more than just have the host standing there and do the speech. And Ryan mm -hmm. was very be able to deliver that in a very short amount of time which is we're very happy about it so that's a location where why we picked the pit stop to be an asian center because that's pretty much uh a signature thing which you don't really get to see a lot of asian structure uh building but you can see you get to see that especially like an old style japanese garden style in ubc that's why we will try to feature that location as one of the pit stops uh, then after scouting the area, planning, then we talk about casting or interview teams. Like personally, doing the Amazing Hunt for so many years, we believe everyone is a star. Ryan is a star too. He's our local celebrity, right? So the Amazing Hunt, uh, we usually, right now, we do a two signature hashtags. We call it Race Together and You Are Chosen One. Uh, I came up with this hashtag for a reason. So we want everyone to feel no matter um, the color of the skin, or whatever, like, or what, uh, whatever sexuality is, we can all come together as a unity. At the same time, each individual is unique, and no one is the same. So we want to, everyone to feel that every each person is a chosen one, and you are to start your own show, and we are just here to basically tell your story, like how we tell Ryan's story uh, as a triple threat: host, sketch comedian as well as a survivor enthusiast, right? You like the survivor show a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So if anybody was casting from Canada, we know the recent winner is a Canadian female. So cast Ryan Steele to be on the next season or the following season of the survivor. <laughs> I, have to, I have to learn how to swim though. Oh my God. <laughs> now start training your uh, swimming skill then. I know, so, oh my God. Uh, as we talked about earlier, you were on the Amazing Race Canada season two, and mm -hmm. not a lot of people ask you this question to you already. So, do you have any tips for people who are eager to be on reality TV? Uh, reality TV in general, or the Amazing Race? Uh, reality TV in general, like if they do a casting or anything. <clears throat> right? So, I mean, yeah, okay. So, with the Amazing Race, I think it's a great reality TV show to be on because it's no, it's not a lot of mind games. You know, it's just strictly um just doing these challenges and, and and working as a team where i you know i played a little bit of a local survivor and big brother i played a couple of online big brother games over the past couple of years and i recently got asked to play a big brother game again and i i bailed on it a week before because it is so stressful the amount of mind games that go on to it so if you like survivor and big brother are if you're willing to be able to vote out your friends and lie then go for it. That's something that I am not wonderful at. Um, so yeah, if I, mean, I feel Amazing Race is a great show for you to apply for because it's a way more, uh, it's still stressful, but it's not gonna make you go crazy. So do you have to basically showcase your personality a bit more or when, when the production team asks you questions about Ryan, who are you? What are you, what are you best at? And then what we like to see, what you can show case on TV? Did they ask you something, some questions like that? Or how did that work for you? I mean, yeah, most of it was post, you know, we'd finish the leg of the race and then we'd sit down for an hour and they'd ask us all the questions about the, the what we did and, and, and then relate personal stuff to it. But during the race, only when you're like in a car or something, because you always have a crew with you, a camera guy and a sound guy. Then if you have like a 45 minute drive ahead of you and production knows that, then yeah, sometimes they would ask us questions um, in the car. But it's funny, all the, the cameramen and the, and the sound people are all mic'd with the main production crew. So they're all, they're all communicating uh, mm -hmm. to themselves uh, and we're just kind of sitting there just waiting for what they're going to do. 
<laughs> yeah, we also uh, during our race in Amazing Time, we actually try to ask the racers some questions to as well whenever we can. Uh, we don't have that luxury. Basically, have the teams to sit down after the leg of the race. It was, our race is just one day, so we can't really have the teams to sit down afterwards. So, but we try to have the cameraman to ask them questions as much as possible. Sometimes with the Shire teams, they don't really say anything. But we always tell the racers if you are want to be have more airtime, talk as much as you can, even though some sometimes it's your inner voice. I know some racers will be so focused on actually racing, but be able to verbalize it is actually very important. Mm -hmm. And then after that, after the casting and interviewing, of course, then we go to fine tuning because sometimes things are not really how you plan and you want to have to change things, especially during the pandemic, right? So to back up, so you have to have some backups or alternatives. Um, then also we have to make sure that all the teams will be able to race in the location that we we plan for them to do or any challenge they have to do. Um, it, our Actually, our challenge is sometimes for some people were saying that it's very tough for a local race. But I think even though our races are tough, but I think I believe our, racer, our, our racers are tougher, right? So they will be able to pull through uh, all the races that have done, all the challenges that have done in the past. And the last, of course, is just come to rehearsal. Here's our checkbook corners and our camera operators, our, our beloved host, Ryan Steele, learn they, what they should do on the race day. Uh, like Ryan will learn his line, be a charming host to deliver good news and bad news to the teams. And you think that teams will be angry when Ryan delivered the bad news. But here's something that we actually like to show the viewers, what, what he said, and people were just <laughs> kind of smiling at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's BS, man. They're going to the wrong location. I guess they didn't see me. Am I supposed to grab something? How's it going so far? Yeah, I'm gonna throw this is the best race you've ever done. <laughs> Top notch. Anytime I'm here, man. Word up. All right, well, smiles for now, but I have some bad news. You guys are still racing. There you go. Thank That's you. That's great news. We want more beer, bro. Anna and Jason, you guys are team number six. Six. Good job, guys. But just so you know, you're still racing. Six. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't right. Sean. The good news is you guys are team number seven. Wipe those stupid smiles off your faces because you're still racing. But you guys still have some racing you? Oh yeah. Sorry, sorry. Heck yes. The good news is you're still racing. Oh my oh. god! Ryan, why? Okay, read it, read it, read it. Okay. Oh my yeah. god, what, wipe those stupid smiles off your face. Yay. <laughs> well, you got oh. very red already. Wow, I can't believe that. Apparently, this video clip oh. has the same, same effect as um, some, something else, which I've seen you totally read in another mm. podcast that you did. Okay, mm. so uh, so if I were going to more details about, about the whole process, I actually have to go to UBC like 10 times prior to the race, <laughs> figure out every little details. I have to go with checkpoint coordinators, uh, camera co uh, operators. I have to go, to go with Ryan as well before the, every, before the race day. So 10 times will be an average count of how many times I have to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, and then after that, what Ryan didn't know about what was going on sometime, I don't really try to disclose all the information to everybody because I had, for me personally, I had to figure out where the parking lots are. That Ryan doesn't have to worry about that. Ryan basically just have to worry about how to go to pit stop one, a starting line, pit stop one, pit stop two, and then finish line. But mm -hmm. the reason why I have to go basically check out the parking lots because at one point I basically have to uh, go to a location, uh, film the teams doing challenges. And after that, I have to quickly jump into my car, drive to the lo next location that's where Ryan is. But then because it's so far for me to run from one location to another, where Ryan may have ample time before the teams actually check into other locations, uh, driving for me is the fastest. So then I drive there, run from the parking lot to the uh, forest. I'm not sure if Ryan remember the forest that we did, um, like a very interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. And then after that is done, I have to basically jump back to my car, drive to back to the same parking lot, and then go to another challenge. So I only had 10 minutes to do that. So 
it's like I'm doing the race as well as oh, when the teams are doing the race. So this is something Ryan didn't know. I was like, nah, it's okay. I don't have to let him know. It creates more stress for everybody. <laughs> so, wow. the, so for you doing this kind of things, we know that you have to basically jump from points to points to points before the racer to be there. So it's doing sketch comedy, like doing live sketch comedy in front of all bunch of audience. It's easier being than being a host for the Amazing Hunt. Um, for me, yes, because sketch comedy is more in my blood. Like I like mm -hmm. hosting, but like I, I mentioned earlier, it was a little more challenging than I thought it would be. Um, sketch comedy, we, you know, we practice for weeks and weeks and weeks. And also, if you forget something, you can just improv it. And also, Amy and I have been doing it so long together that it's, you know, I feel like we could do it with our eyes closed. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the Amazing Hunt was definitely a little more challenging. And mm -hmm. uh, you can't you can't always bank on what's going to happen with teams and, and timing and stuff. So yeah, definitely the amazing hunt was more challenging. And as a racer in the past where you have, do you like, do you think the production basically have to be able to predict or even do anything before you do something, right? You know, it's like, because we know what racers can do something that's out of our imagination. Do you mm -hmm. ever do anything that surprised the production team in amazing race Canada too? um well i think we <laughs> one time we took so long to find a freaking location that i think they were just flabbergasted on how bad we were at driving in directions mm -hmm. um but I, I don't i don't i mean we actually we were so far behind that they we went to one of the challenges and it was too late to do it so we actually got to skip it because we were just so far in last that we're like well it's not going to affect the race outcome so just go to the pit stop um mm -hmm. but yeah i don't i don't think other than that there was anything we did that was too crazy that screwed things up okay see ryan just disclosed some production secret from actual tv show if sometimes if the same thing for the amazing hunt if it doesn't really affect the outcome of the race we either don't show it or basically just say well for whatever reason production reason we just basically skip it it does yeah. happen sometimes but we try not to uh show it on the editing but it does happen right and nothing mm -hmm. can it's nothing is predictable when the teams are racing so and according to the podcast which I've, I've listened religiously for a lot of there's so many amazing race season 33 podcasts out there and from king kim and pen from the holders nurse family which they're the one of the teams that are currently on the amazing race 33 um they talk about uh, it was very impressive to see the creator uh, and executive producer bertram uh, from the amazing race constantly on his phone texting and trying to come up with the leg of the race in another continent while the teams were racing in england like in the first leg or second leg we meant third leg because at that moment it was unsafe for the race uh to go to asia because the pandemic would just started right especially in asia and then bertram will basically had to come up with alternative plans uh and it, it was actually was mentioned at some point they would have to go to Antarctica. Uh, so I was kind of bummed that the the production actually went to a halt. So, halt. so then they were not even able to go to Antarctica, which I think the Amazing Race never did. Uh, so we're talking about behind the scenes stuff a little bit. So Ryan, like you said earlier, that you will need to basically talk about some things about your uh, they, they basically have to ask you how you feel about the race or do you, do you ever be prompt to do anything by the production team? On the actual Amazing Race? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if I can talk about it, though. There was, okay, mm -hmm. I, I guess it's been so many years. There was one time where we were not going to do a, uh, a certain um, fast forward and our crew kind of nudged us to take a risk, so we did. Oh, it's okay. Trust me, I have nudged one team to do the fast forward too, so yeah. uh, it's it's not a secret. Sometimes we have to understand. It's in the end of it, it's a TV show. There mm -hmm. are certain things that the production team definitely want people to do, and so that they can feature it. Even as a viewer, sometimes I wonder if all, like for example, in the Amazing Race Canada, there are ten teams. If it, it will be like if all nine teams were known to pick one detour, I think the 10, 10 teams would be nudged by the production and say, hey, we set up this cool challenge. Can you guys just go do that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So 
Yeah. So I think I think there was. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I think there was only there was one challenge during my uh, season that no one did. It was like counting potatoes or something in uh, I want to say Prince Edward Island or no 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 in uh, in uh, New Brunswick maybe Nova Scotia. Anyway, yeah, there was only one. But other than that, I think every challenge got um, utilized by one team. Yeah. So. In the end of it, I guess uh, viewers or people who watch the TV have to understand it is a TV show and then it's important to showcase whatever they have set up. So a lot of production interference will happen, but not in an unfair way. It is mm -hmm. they try to be as fair as possible in the end, right? So uh, talking about Bertram, uh, basically amazing race creator, I have to be constantly on texting because he was so... I think brilliant coming out with things just on the fly to come up with an LA because of pandemic, right? At that moment, they don't know and have to shut the production down. Mm -hmm. uh, even for me uh, as a local race producer, I'm constantly texting and calling my staff just to make sure that teams are arriving on time or not arriving late. Mm -hmm. So Ryan probably had felt the stress when I was constantly checking up with him on the phone by the text. Do you feel the stress as well? Yes, because I was a, a host slash executive producer <laughs> slash showrunner slash show center upper. <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, I understand it's just, a, you know, yeah. a local a local production. So you need help where you can get it. And and a lot of it wasn't a huge deal. It just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, after the after the first race I did with you, I kind of got the learning curve a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, re I remember the first one being like, I was probably just as stressed out as some of the racers sometimes. Yeah, so... People think that if the production team is not as stressed as a racer, please, we are much more stressed than the actual racers on the, in the race. So mm -hmm. talking about the stressful area, how difficult it is, I may be biased, but I think it is actually more difficult for the amazing race type of competition to be coordinating something like that or to planning something like this, then it's much more easier to for the survivor production team where they just put a whole bunch of people on the island they vote each other off do you think that's the case ever or do you think that they both have their uh, the same amount of difficulties oh no i think amazing race is obviously more difficult i think survivor you know you want to make sure oh same with amazing race you like you want to make sure you're getting all the conversations and all the strategy and um you know all the footage you need but like amazing race turns off you know you run the leg there's there's a hotel there's there's bed there's there's a break everyone gets to turn the game off for a day or less um mm -hmm. usually and then survivor though it's like it's continuous but um yeah so but actually to answer the question properly sorry yeah amazing race is, uh, <laughs> no, no no it's okay much, much more stressful I, I i don't want to i don't want to say it is more stressful to do racing racing style planning but we know that in a live reality games community there are a lot of people doing survivor stuff and then mm -hmm. sometimes personally i think their their stress in a sense is that they have to stay up even at night time if any because it's a lot of games are running as multiple days so in the sense of it, they have to wake up or they have to film when some uh, castaways need to actually have a good strategy that for the amazing race i don't think they there's on and off button, especially when it's on, it's very on, right? Mm -hmm. If it's off, it's just totally off. But Survivor, I think it's a constant thing going on. But in the yeah. end of it, because uh, I never produced, I did produce one Survivor, a uh, few Survivor things, which Ryan was one of the contestants as well. <laughs> Not it, a very good one. It, it was very stressful too. But either of that, so uh, either way, I think sometimes we're racing so long, so many created so many race to be honest and then uh having so many races in our races um i think my job is always try to outsmart the races as much as possible uh because and also try to race to the finish line like for you to race to finish line before the race racers do right sometimes you I, mean, I know ryan told me before he was cutting so close he doesn't even have time to fully do his finish line speech before the racers checked in do you believe that's is that's also something that happens to you like you have done i think about five races with me is that how it, how it goes with you sometime of course yeah <laughs> it's like i think maybe once it happened where there was a, a team got to um a checkpoint before i did and i was like i i was dumbfounded i was like i ran how did they get here before me um so yeah it uh it's a little unpredictable yeah true so then 
we talk about this is all behind the scenes stuff. So then we back go back to the during the pandemic thing. So once we know about the pandemic, and then during the time in August 2020, there wasn't any vaccine available for the general public. So all we can do for the production team for them on amazing hunt is to basically follow the instruction from the provincial health order to do six feet apart and to wear masks. So like we kept the pit, pit stop mat a little bit further from Ryan when the team's checking in. And basically the teams are very automatically just say, we are not going to have a face-to-face -face encounter with Ryan as well. Is, did you feel okay at that point? Do you feel safe that the teams actually knows how to do that? Basically keep a distance away from you? Oh yeah, definitely. I wasn't worried at all. I, I was, we were outside. It was, it was well-spaced. It was, it was yeah. safe. And of course we all have advised the racers that they need to advise us, the production team, if they have any, any cold symptoms within the 72 hours prior to the race. And with this new rule that we implemented, we unfortunately had a team lost her partner due to her teammate exhibit symptoms. Cold symptoms, and then anyone would find out. But she was trying, she was trying so hard to find a replacement. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what, Ryan? You you were in a car with me at that moment. How, do you still vaguely remember how it went down <laughs> when I was frantically on the phone? Yeah, you were trying to. Yeah, weren't you just trying to find someone so last minute, like the morning of the race? You're trying to find someone to come race, right? Yeah. 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 And then it's good that the girl find another very athletic girl that actually be able to came to the race. And it was worked mm -hmm. out way much better. But the person who didn't end up being the race subsequently actually came back to our beer race. So oh, nice. a good thing. Yeah, so that's good. So um so we talk about this as being a local production, and it's not really a network TV network thing. But we because we film it, we try not to have teams to cover their face with masks during the race, or especially when we are filming. But we had the teams to wear a mask during downtime. And if they feel like they can breathe through the mask when they're running or doing challenges, if they feel the need to, we will let them do it. It's only, I think one recently we have uh, footage in our most recent beer race uh, where we had team basically pull, up, pull down their mask, reading the clue, but they put it back on when they finish reading it. So we, everybody's taking precaution uh, in the best way they can. Mm -hmm. And when we set up the challenges, also there's divider in the restaurants where they try to keep the things apart. Uh, you can check out our UBC race footage where you will see that in front of the chemistry building, when the teams are doing the math challenge, there are like uh, six benches. And then each team will occup occupy one bench and with one bench apart from each other. So that's more than six feet, so which is good. So I think in the mind of it, for the production team as well as the racer, we all have sort of mindset saying that we need to be polite and be safe enough to keep distance from each other. I think Ryan will agree to that more probably because mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think any stress that we endured during the race was really nothing was about the pandemic situation, right? Because everything is being well taken care of. I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So then we know that aside from you personally, that you're doing a sketch comedy earlier, talk about you wearing masks with Amy doing some indoor shooting. I know we mm -hmm. also, you also have done a lot of uh, filming with uh, Harden Production, a uh, Harden film, which uh, other co collaboration you have with uh, uh, in Vancouver Airport as well. So, what mm -hmm. kind of safety measure they are doing when you are doing this kind of production work? Yeah, for with YBR, we just did one uh, in December for Christmas, and uh, I was Santa Claus, and Amy was Mrs. Claus, and yeah, we had to wear masks the whole time because we were inside the airport, and I mean, we had to be safe and we had to do it, but I have to say, it does take away a little bit from the uh, overall goal of what humor you want to get. Like, there's a lot of humor that can happen mm -hmm. with, a, with a visual mouth, you know what I yeah. mean? um the way you say a word or the way you react to something so we, we we you know obviously um played by all the safety rules and we wore the masks but um i can't wait till we don't have to wear them because it's just <laughs> it's it's honestly it's I, I and i fully understand and I'm, I'm fine with it but it's just not ideal when you're trying to be funny um so yeah but for ybr we wore masks the whole time and even santa i had a big beard and it was very difficult to get a mask mm over it and over my ears with the hat and everything. It was a little bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. So everybody is trying to be safe in the best way they can. Mm -hmm. And like um, for us at this point right now, we have done four races since the pandemic started. I think all our rules are very much the same. Keep a good distance, wear a mask if you feel needed. needed. The only time we will actually ask you, ask the racers to take down the mask is when you're reading the clue. Because we don't have mic attached to the teams, and that's just one sort of a difficulty that we're facing. But in the end of it, you will see Ryan basically was standing there greeting the teams and keep a good distance. Ryan doesn't have to cover his face because he's, he's handsome. He's Good looking, so yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, so then when you see him at pit stop or anything, you don't always see him that actually just his full face is right there without a mask. But we do mm -hmm. take safe safe safety measure there, and of course after talking about this thirty third race, and that's our first race ever done do, during the pandemic during in August twenty twenty. Uh, uh, basically way ahead of with a lot of uh, reality TV games, uh, TV shows, or even any reality TV competition. Uh, we welcome you to check out our 33rd City Expedition at UBC on our Facebook page, Instagram, and in our YouTube channel at The Amazing Hunt. And we also have other seasons as well and that we produce during the pandemic. Both are local, about local, well, they are both about local craft beer. Uh, and then in craft beer breweries in British Columbia, it was even more complex to deal with, shorter uh, with like shorter business hours, limited sitting and capacity, etc. So that will be another story which I hope can dive into another day. So we just have one thing we'd like to show, just how you know we talk about Ryan being a sketch comedian. There's sometimes I don't really have to tell Ryan what to say, and he's actually really good at being improv. Let's take a one more clip on what he says to the racers in one of the challenges. Here at Woodland Park, teams will face off in a memory challenge. Sean, Jennifer, you guys represent the last two teams in this challenge. One of you will move on and one of you will not. You'll be eliminated from the race and shot in the head. Yeah. You guys, it is 2020 and we're not fucking around. So the racist reaction will tell me to keep that and it actually did. Unfortunately, I cannot keep that on Facebook, but if you check out our YouTube video, the actual swearing part, which I did, we did this beep out here, is actually on YouTube. So yeah. Yeah, and that's something was like, yeah, I'll keep it as long as everybody's good with it, which everybody is like being so supportive and very laughing at your jokes, which like good. See, that's why I love Ryan being our host. He'd be able to come up with things that is actually natu it's naturally funny sometimes. Shooting you in the head, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, uh, well, of course, we well, thank you, Ryan, for being a part of this podcast. And please go to check out other Triple Threat Ryan Steele's Extra Talent in the Ryan Amy show where the, the, he makes fun for everything with his comedic partner, Amy Good Murphy on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan and Amy show at his, and his podcast, Poor Little Thing. On the bottom right corner, there is the Instagram tag, subscribe quickly as possible, right there, yes. And we thank live reality TV communities being supportive, not only to the amazing hunt, but to every game and competition that are currently, uh, currently running or running during the pandemic time. We, of course, The Amazing Hunt is looking forward to creating more adventures in 2022. We'd like to invite you to join us in our city expedition. 36 premiere today, this afternoon at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It is another race that is produced during the pandemic and the race is chock full of food challenges, which I believe The Amazing Race hasn't done any food challenges for a very long time. So, so join the Amazing Hunt, Vancouver's own reality TV style adventure in our upcoming competitions in 2022 and submit your application at amazinghunt.com because we are still racing. And if you want to keep your laugh, if your life funny, then more than you want to laugh all the way, please go check out Ryan and Amy show, uh, subscribe his channel and his podcast is really, really funny. And you should come up very soon. Ryan, yes. any words to talk about anything else? I don't, uh, 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 sorry, you have anything else to talk about? At the end? No, no, it's a good idea. Poor little thing, the podcast coming out soon. Spotify, Apple Music, all that. And 
Yeah. Watch the Ryan and Amy show on Instagram. And we're on TikTok too. Um, so Ryan and Amy show on TikTok. Yes. And Ryan just mentioned to me that he was doing a very fun skit with wine, pouring, drinking, and that's really fun to check it out. Okay. So thank you so much for being a part of this podcast today. Thank you, Ryan. We hope to see you soon. Thanks, Bill. No problem. Bye. Bye.